a very good morning so today we are going to deal with a very interesting topic of machine learning and the topic for today is instance based learning so uh, what is instance based learning instance based learning is the combination of uh, two specific words first is instance based and second is learning what is instance based now let me give you a very classical example for that suppose i'm having uh, a group of data and that group of data has been uh, uh, consisting of several data sets in it right suppose if i'm having uh, a classroom and that classroom is the hypothesis space in that hypothesis space i'm having around 60 students in the form of data sitting in it right so if i need to simply uh, learn about all the data then what i supposed to do i supposed to simply memorize it that uh, these uh, the, these many heads or uh, i simply go for the head counts that these many students are sitting so overall a virtual idea actually stores in my mind and i could not give the specification of that uh, particular data set but in order to go with m- more specific learning i need to generalize it so instance based learning is entirely dependent on data sets which are divided into different instances right and all those instances has been carrying a specific weight suppose in the classroom it has been divided with different rows and in each rows there are 20 or 30 students are sitting now if i need to go for generalize generalizing model then what i supposed to do i go in that speci- i go in any specific row for of my choice and choose a specific data who is a student and learn that data by having the knowledge of its weight so in that case the weight might be his dress the complexion the hair style so these are the weights or the labels associated to that specific data and that specific data is located in that specific instance so in order to make the learning more specific we have gone through this model of instance based learning so instance based learning generally categorizes or basically follows the two approaches which is memorizing and second second is generalizing so as i have told you earlier that if i'm talking about memorizing then i simply go with the test data and memorize the instances but there are some limitations to it if i go for just memorizing it then i could not tell the specification right if somebody ask me the specific uh, uh, the specification of uh, the memorized data then i could not be able to reciprocate so in order to go with the specification of that data set i need to go with the concept of generalization now in generalization what we supposed to do is that we are having the training example and also we store the labels to it suppose we are having the training example in the form of data and each and every data is been given as the specific labels and when the data is been weighted with that label i can memorize it more accurately i can memorize it more specifically 
so that is the advantage of generalization now what is rote learning so rote learning is the learning in which they don't know what they are learning right suppose uh, i'm having the 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 layman idea if suppose somebody asked me that uh, tell me something about uh, bangalore or tell me something about mumbai and i yes i have visited those places but i don't have the specifications of those places i have simply uh, gone through the outskirts of those places so i can only tell that yes uh, bombay is the place and 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 the, the climatic conditions are like this and that but i cannot explain the actual uh, features of that specific place so that type of learning is known as rote learning now why instance based learning is known as lazy learning why it is known as the lazy learning so why it is known as the lazy learning because we are storing the labels in the particular instances right every time we are going uh, to memorize the data what we are doing we are storing the labels to that particular instance and while doing so in the training set it is consuming lots of time so which actually increasing the processing time and also the complexity of computation so the run time also increases so that is why this type of learning is known as lazy learning now i have been provided with this data set suppose why it is known as lazy learning so there is a very classical example to it i have been provided with this data set i can clearly see that this data set consists of a specific data and now some new data suddenly pops in this row suppose this is row number 1 this is row number 2 3 4 and 5 now in row number 2 by learning this data a new data suddenly pops in then the whole process will go on the iteration right again go on the iteration and will again uh, increase the time so the same phenomena happens in each and every row in each and every time when the new or the peculiar data has been provided with the passage of data which is already been given in the reference data set so it consumes lots of time why it is consuming lot of time because it is actually iterating it is actually traversing figuring out that what what is the new data is all about how it uh, it is actually identifying it and in order to identify the specific data it is increasing the processing time and that is why it is known as the lazy learning now instance based learning are basically classified into three approaches first is lazy approach which is nearest neighbor this nn stands for nearest neighbors second is radial basis function or the weighted methods and the third approach is case based case based reasoning so about the lazy approach i have already discussed that in lazy approach we have large instance sets and uh, it will be uh, logically assigned to target function for each new instance and which is perhaps increasing the computational time as well as the complexity so that is why it is known as lazy approach second approach is radial basis function or the weighted methods suppose uh, i'm having a function and uh, or i'm having a specific function and that func function is being weighted so every time i'm having a new function i'm weighting it i'm i'm giving that function the specific weight so while doing so it is again increasing the time complexity right and in the third case uh, case based reasoning so case based reasoning uh, is also a very time consuming phenomena why because in this mechanism what is what is actually happening is that 
Suppose I'm having a present data and I'm having a past data. Now, after making a comparison with these two datas, I'm predicting the forthcoming data. So this is known as case based reasoning that I'm having a past case and I'm having a present case. So I'm making a comparison with these two cases and forecasting the new case. So while doing so, it is consuming a lot. Again, while doing so, it is consuming a lot of time. So that is why instance based learning is known as the lazy learning. So there's one example I would like to frame in front of you. Suppose I'm having a function and uh, two types of functions suppose I'm having. First is linear function. I need to identify the data sets and in order to identify the data sets, uh, there are different types of functions are available. So uh, we can have linear functions, we can have functions in terms of polynomials, we can have regressive functions, etc. So suppose in the case of linear function, the problem is very simple. But what happens if my function is polynomial when there are n number of data sets which are present? So in that case, what I suppose to do, I, I make a hypothesis space. Suppose uh, these dots are the data, right? These dots are the data and these data is spread in this whole space. So what I suppose to do now? I need to classify each and every data in order to memorize it. So in order to classify the data, I need to draw the line or I need to make the boundary for each data. So here you can easily observe that for each data, I have made a boundary. So why I have made a boundary in order to classify the specification of that data in order to identify the specific data at that specific instance and this whole uh, space, this whole hypothesis space is known as polyhydron or Voronoi space. Now there are some of the disadvantages associated with it because uh, when we will uh, go with these type of learning, uh, we need to face time complexity, we need to face com computational complexity we need to face a runtime error or sometimes <coughs> it will take uh, uh, sometimes the algorithm uh, hangs out. So these are several problems or the disadvantages which we used to face in instance based learning. So this is all about instance based learning in our next topic in our next class we will discuss about a few algorithms based on instance based learning. First is KNN algorithm, second is logically weighted regression and uh, the third algorithm is uh, case based learning algorithm. So in our next class, we will discuss each and every algorithm one by one. So thank you for now.